Hey YouTube, Mickey. All right, just doing a quick vid, and sorry again to my man cave. Again, I've just got no time to get out bush, unfortunately. Uh, this is a VR reply to um, Ozzy Shikari, I think it is. I'll <clears throat> put the person's name, um, or his name, um, on the description. But he asked me, Mick, what, what knife do you take, what bushcraft or survival knife do you take um, on your hikes? And it's it's a bit of a hard answer because because I've got so many knives. I want to say so many, maybe 12, 15 knives. Um, I'm still trying to find that one knife that I can have on my person every single day hike, every single overnighter, every single every single three dayer, every single weeker. Um, I think I have found that knife. Um, but I buy I buy knives nearly all the time, at least every or well, lately every every month or two or three months, um, and you know if it's not a, a fixed blade, it's a pocket knife or something, a multi tool. But look, what I'll start off with is I'll get into the fixed blade. What knife I carry with me um, most of the time when I go for a day hike. Um, as on on my person then I'll go into the knife that I 92% of the time take with me all the time when I'm out bush being in my backpack most of the time or on my person um, but the number one I guess tool that I take with me at all times no matter where I go what I do <clears throat> is again the good old Leatherman wave that is the one thing I never leave home without. Home to work, home to the corner shop, home to do some grocery shopping. It's always with me. So, I mean, that's not answering your question, but that's one knife or one tool I carry with me no matter where I go. Okay? If it's not the wave, it's something else. I was carrying a Gerber Crucial, but the friggin' um, pocket clip just decided to snap on me. So, Gerber Crucial. Nah, maybe I've got the wrong batch, I don't know. Great multi-tool, but I know this Leatherman Wave ain't going to break on me. So anyway, I don't leave home without that multi-tool. Um, okay, I'll I'll grab the knife that I probably... And it's hard, I've got four knives laid on the table here. And um, I guess as of late, because it is a semi-kind of recent, uh, recent perp... Um, purchase can't speak sorry is the Jeff White um, Jeff White knife um, sold by uh, the Pathfinder store uh, also sold by survival supplies Australia in Melbourne the owner is Dennis um, that's what I've been carrying lately on my person nice and light five inches full tang nice handle Carbon steel, 1095. I think it's here, 1095. Uh, convex. Um, I have, I've actually now have got used to the convex edge, like the straight, full-on convex. Um, nice sheath, great sheath, because the benefit with this sheath is that it actually fits three or four of my other knives. Very, very comfy. So this sheath is multi-purpose in regards to carrying other knives. And it is a really, really good quality sheath. You can tell the stitching ain't going to come off this thing. <clears throat> so, answer, lately, it's been the Jeff White. Uh, Bush knife, I think it's called. Prior to that knife was the Joker, RAK1, I think it is, or RAK2. I think it's the RAK1. <clears throat> I've been carrying this knife. A lot of the times before uh, I purchased the Jeff White, great blade. I had to reprofile the blade because I wasn't happy with the, the grind of it. Um, what was it before? I think it was a... Oh, come on man, Mick, remedy your knife, your knife kind of profiles. It was... I don't know, can't, I can't tell you. But anyway, 
It's more of a Scandi kind of now, which I like, and it is sharp as buggery. Sharp as buggery. So that is the one knife I was carrying for a very, very long time on my person all the time when I went on hikes and stuff. Uh, the sheath, you can carry it that way. You can carry it that way. Um, great sheath. Admittedly, the sheath has kind of come apart on me, but I've just fixed it up. No biggie there. Uh, the retention with the knife is not the best anymore. Um, so carrying it that way, it's going to fall out. But, you know, being me, there's always ways of fixing that. And just, you grab the uh, the clip here, and I grab my lanyard. I put the lanyard through the clip there, clip it on. It ain't coming out, so I can wear it that way. So, um... <clears throat> You know, I have been carrying this, and I still do carry this here and there. It, it's a great friggin' knife, man. It's just built like a tank. And it ticks a lot of the boxes in regards to a, a survival knife and a bushcraft knife because of the Scandi. And for me, it, it, it just it ticks all the boxes. That's, that's all I can say. And a knife is a personal preference. It's an individual preference of what you like and what tasks you feel comfortable with do, with doing. Um, it's just personal preference, man. You know what I mean? Some people can just use a simple butcher knife and do all the tasks that, that is required. Okay, so they're the two knives, I guess, that I've been using mainly. Um, <clears throat> now, the one knife that is, as I said, 92% of the time with me. Why 92%? I don't know. It just sounds good. Um, the one knife that is always with me in my bag or on my person is that, is the Kisler Grillius. Um, great sheath, ain't gonna fall apart on you. Um, you know, the sheath didn't come with a uh, ferro rod kind of holder, so I just improv improvised using a pen duct taping it, bang, it's on there. Um, again, the good old, well it's not duct tape, sorry, it's, we call it husky tape here, or carpet tape, but got the sail needle there. But uh, the reason why <clears throat> this is always with me is that it is a big blade, okay? It is a true, for me, this is a knife that I could go out bush and be very very comfortable out there for a very long time if I had one one tool okay I know this video is not about a one tool option um, but for me if you're gonna say what is the best survival knife then I think a survival knife is classed as a one tool option because you're surviving the meaning of survival is is to live is to survive is to is the will to live is to get out of that situation and live you know, be alive. Um, so that is it. That's the Kisler Grillius. Um, I can't remember the length of it. It's a good seven inches, I think. Yep. So seven. Start from the top of the handle here. Seven and a bit. So seven and a quarter inches. Um, six and three quarters cutting edge um, quarter of an inch thick uh, thick on the spine and uh, it is a beefy knife a little bit heavy yeah no no doubt because it is just one big chunk of steel and one big chunk of handle basically it, it is a big handle which fits my hand perfectly um, <clears throat> what can I say about this knife it ticks all the boxes for me um, I can choke up on it right there I wish it had a bit of a bit of bit more aggressive kind of, uh, I guess, indent there to to choke up, but it doesn't. But that's all right. I can still choke up, and do fine tasks. Okay, and apologise I'm not in the bush doing this, but you know you can choke up on it, and uh, you know get those fine little shavings, those fine little feather sticks if you want. Okay, uh, it is sharp all the way from the bottom to the tip. Um, so again, I can do the same thing on the tip. Just get little shavings like that. 
chopping capabilities is amazing. It will chop, and it is a great chopper. Um, <clears throat> skinning. You know, you can grab this knife, get right up on there, and process game if you like. Um, you know, you don't have jimping, but you've got this little kind of dip here, okay, where you can put your thumb and get really good control also. Choke up, thumb there, and really get good control. All my knives, every single knife, even if it's still a 90 degree angle, all my knives, I grind the spine. The spine. Don't care if it looks shit, I grind the spine. Because it just throws better sparks. And I want a knife to be able to throw sparks. My mates always bag me, Mick, that's a beautiful knife, why are you, why are you stuffing it up? I don't care. This is a field knife. I'm taking this out bush with me, and if I get lost, I need to depend on this thing. So by grinding the spine, which doesn't take long, 10 seconds, and you know, you're getting, mate, meteors flying out of that thing. So I do that with every single knife. The other reason why I grind the spine is so I can grab a stick and get little, get little shape, oh, sorry, I'll do the other side, and get little shavings. I'm not sure if you can see that flying off there get little shavings so I've got a tinder bundle and I can light it up you know don't use your friggin blade to do that you're just gonna blunt it use the back of your spine um, this part here it isn't razor sharp it isn't paper cutting sharp but it will scrape your fingernail a bit this is used if if I mean this is one of the reasons why uh, and this is what Kizzler has told me is that uh, you're hunting, you've got an animal, you need to break the bone, you know, you need to get through that bone. Bang, bang, bang. That's going to snap the bone or break it enough where you can start cutting around it and snap the bone off and pull the animal's leg off or whatever you need to do. Um, batoning, <laughs> no issue. Six and, or seven, in the, or seven inch blade, um, you've got no issues batoning. And because of the profile, if I get that with you, you know, starts thick, goes down, so it's great for batoning and splitting that wood. Uh, no issues there. Um, the one thing I wish it had with a lot of my knives is uh, the, the uh, pommel. I wish the pommel stuck out and it was a nice square bit of metal, just so I could, you know, smash rock, crush some nuts. Um, I mean, there's a lot of reasons and purposes why a knife should have a nice hard pommel and a square pommel. I don't really, I'm not into the glass breaking pommels and stuff like that. I, I just don't feel the need to have that. Um, you know, ice break as they called. Well, there's no ice in New South Wales. Um, nothing freezes that cold to get to that point. If that makes sense, it probably doesn't. Um, but I wish it did, but it doesn't. But still, you know, I can um, baton, I can grab this, baton it into a tree, and maybe tap a tree for water. Uh, many reasons. Still very capable. The handle is very, very hard. It is my carter, I think. Yeah, it is my carter. Held by three pins. So, you know. So, I don't want this video to go forever. That is, I guess, the answer to your question. That is the one knife I take with me all the time okay 92% of the time why 90% or 92 or 95% of the time because if I'm going for a day hike with a haversack in my suburban reserve I ain't wearing that my, on my person I'll get friggin arrested by the cops and it won't fit in my haversack um, well depending what haversack it will most of my haversacks it won't when I'm using my backpack it's generally always in there okay so I hope that answers your question, brother. Um, Kizzler Grillius. Um, you can look it up on the Kizzler Knife Store website. Um, again, I'll put that in the description. Where's my coffee? Here it is. I bought this coffee mug from Hawaii. Love it. It's massive. Um, that's it, man. That's 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 hopefully the answer to your question. So I hope that's helped you. Um, <laughs> uh, I was going to say something, but I'll leave this till later, but, uh, no, fuck it, I'll say it now. I am in the process of, um, 
working with an Australian knife maker. Um, sorry, how long have I been filming? 14 minutes. Sorry, guys, I'll make this quick. I'm going to have a smoke, sorry. I'm going to have a smoke. Some people actually have been complaining. Mick, you shouldn't be smoking on camera. Sorry, man, but... I don't know, it helps me think better. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, um, I've met... I'm, well, I'm, I'm person to person. I'm meeting this knife maker tomorrow at the SHOT Show. Um, but via YouTube and via phone call and text messages and emails, we have both come up with a concept of a knife and he's an Australian knife maker I've seen his blades on YouTube I'm not going to introduce him quite yet um, I don't think he wants me to yet until um, he's ready um, but we are developing a knife together he's put he, he's had his input I've had my input I think he is currently starting it starting it now or waiting for the steel I'm not going to mention any of the tool steel and all that but I guarantee you this knife is going to be the bomb. It's going to be a knife that I think a lot of people are going to want. Even you Americans, man, I think you're going to want this knife. Um, we've put our heads together. I've I've mentioned. I've, I've said to him what I want from a knife personally. Um, he's had his ideas of what he wants from a knife personally, um, and this knife is going to be the shit. So look out for it. Hopefully, you'll be ready in. I'll say a month and a half, two months. Um, and once it is it is made and ready, I will go out and field test it, and um, I will do a review on it. And if this knife works out to the way we think it will, that will be the one knife I take with me everywhere I go. That will be the one knife that's going to be on my person when I'm 60, 70, 80, 90, if I live that long. It's going to be that knife I'm going to hand down to my boy. It's going to be a good knife. Fingers crossed. I'm 99% sure it will be. So anyway, getting off track. So... There you go, brother. Um, I'm going to end it. It's about 15, 16 minutes of this video. 17. All right, cool. See you.